Hello and welcome to this edition of Quality of Life, the show where we look at different aspects of quality of life. Today we're going to talk about family reunification. And joining us today is Heidi Goodmanson from the Sheboygan County Interfaith Organization. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you. Um, to start out with family reunification, uh, breaking it down a little bit more, there's like, you know, the family unit itself, uh, troubles that goes through, hunger, and what's the other component we were going to discuss? Homelessness. Homelessness, thank you. That one kind of slipped my mind, so there we have it. Um, you're now with, you're the executive director of the Sheboygan County Interfaith Organization, or SCIO is a short. How long yeah. have you been in that role? Just since um, the middle of June here. Okay. And prior to that, I was um, as a case manager through Lutheran Social Services here in Sheboygan. Um, and I worked with the 18 to 21 year old population of homeless young people. And so I spent five years working um, with a grant there. Mm -hmm. In Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, with the homeless, homelessness um, audience situation we have, has it grown since our economic, you know, boomer that we had? And now, as things are starting to recover, do you see that going down? Oh, I definitely think that, you know, 2008 had played a major role in, in homelessness. Um, just the vastness mm -hmm. of the issues. You know, we, we've always had generational poverty. There will always be generational sure. poverty, but situational poverty um, definitely has increased since 2008. I think we still continue to see that. Um, families who have been able to sustain up until now but are still sustaining at a lower income level than what they were, mm -hmm. um, are continuing to, to struggle, kind of making it you know, on the day to day. And a lot of um, families are one paycheck away from being homeless. And so just that stress of um, the economics definitely mm -hmm. plays a role in, in homelessness and um, our issues around surrounding homelessness. I think most of the families in Sheboygan County live paycheck to paycheck these days, you know, when you think about it. Yeah, well, the, that we have 50%, over 50% of the population of students are um, eligible for free and reduced lunches. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, uh, you can be a family of four and make about $50,000, um, you know, that um, gets you into that bracket. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's a large percentage of our population here. Okay. Let's talk about SCIO. Uh, mm -hmm. How long has it been in existence? You know, who, what's it made of? Who contributes to it? And what's its mission? Yeah, Shimon County Interfaith Organization has, was established in 1989. Um, it was a collaboration between faith communities. And really their goal was to put aside their differences and to work towards what their values are. And, um, and they initially really were about um, the, the farmers market, allowing farmers to be able to um, to share their produce with with local people, and um, they grew into being a seed program where faith communities would um, come to the table and share an idea, and um, and then we would be what bridged the gap between those community needs mm -hmm. and partner resources, and that's how many of our programs came about. So actually the farmer's market here in Sheboygan, we, we coordinate that and it's our 25th year. Wow. It was established in 1989. So that's a huge accomplishment um, for this community and um, definitely has taken off in the, since I've been here, the last you know, 10 years mm -hmm. has just grown completely. So um, that's a testament to the people of Sheboygan for sure. sure. Um, what are the programs you know, right now, the active programs that SCIO has in place? Yeah, we have um, the farmer's market, and we coordinate the farmer's market um, at the Fountain Park in the summer and um, at First Congregational Church on um, Bluff in the winter um, in Sheboygan. And then we also coordinate a farmer's market in Plymouth at the Generations Building on Thursdays. Um, we have a supervised visitation program, and that program we are third-party documenters. Um, so if families, um, for whatever reason, one of the um, the non-custodial parent or sibling or whoever it may be can come and um, take some time, one and a half to two hours with their family members. And we provide a safe environment and make sure that there's documentation of what ha is happening. So, you know, that happens for various reasons, but um, that's a free program. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
and a, a really important for family reunification. Mm -hmm. And then we have Bridgeway. Bridgeway is a transitional living program for homeless women with children. And um, that is, um, we have our, a building um, on 13th and Geely that we have uh, the capability to have up to six families. Um, and we have, it's a 13 bed program. So depending on how many children we have at, at each particular time, depends on how many moms we have, but we have the capabilities of having six families, um, but max of 13 beds occupied. Okay. And then we have a, a sister program to that called Trisha's House, and that's a single family home that, um, Residents who graduate from the Bridgeway program can move into Trisha's house. Um, so those are our programs that we currently have. Okay, they sound exciting and like to do a lot of good yeah. in the community <laughs> as far as that goes. Um, let's focus on the Bridgeway sure. program first. So their moms are in trouble or they need to put their lives back together for however their lives got derailed. You know, we won't go into those issues as well, but basically they need help and they come to you. How do they get introduced to the Bridgeway program? Yeah, we get referrals from a lot of different areas. A lot of social workers refer to the Bridgeway program. Um, Safe Harbor, Salvation Army, um, and word of mouth just goes a long way. Um, people who live in, in that community, you know, definitely know the resources of what, what may help and, and or people who have stayed at Bridgeway House before and are like heard a sto story of someone's like, maybe you should try the Bridgeway House. Um, and, and what's unique about Bridgeway is that it's a long-term program. So mothers and their children can stay with us for up to two years, mm -hmm. which is a really long time, um, you know, just to be able to become established. Uh, for example, one of the moms at our, um, at our program right now has shared that she has not lived somewhere more than a year in her entire adult life. Mm -hmm. And so being able to have a little bit of time to get established and set some goals and have some accountability can be really important. With the program, what are the skills that the moms learn? Or I guess what's their orientation or what's the progression plan? Yeah, um, each mom who comes into our program, we do an individualized case plan with them, which is really just goal setting. We sit down and talk about what are some of your goals, what are some of the barriers in order to be become self-sufficient. So some of those barriers might be debt, past debt from child support or mm -hmm. municipal tickets, sure. you know, evictions, all of that. So a lot of the moms that come have some past debt. Um, also, uh, potential for AODA issues, mental health concerns, um, not being able to find sustainable work, um, mm -hmm. not, maybe not having the job skills or the experience behind that, so learning how to write a resume, how to communicate to people in a, in a meaningful way so that you can represent yourself well. Mm -hmm. um, so we start at those core basics, and, and every mom who comes into our, our program also takes um, groups in parenting, meal planning, um, communication and um, and oh, I'm blanking now. But um, oh, and budget financial literacy. Sure. So those are um, every week we mm -hmm. have those programming, so that any mom who comes into our program is um, is utilizing those skills and and we're modeling that all the time. Um, we also encourage all the moms to go attend counseling mm -hmm. um, at an outside resource so that they can have some um, other supports in their life. So we refer to safe harbor groups and to individual counselors, you know, would be depending on their needs. Mm -hmm. With the moms in the Bridgeway facility or the house that you had mentioned, is it their responsibility to work together to take care of the house and actually put the practices that they are learning, you know, into, into use at the house itself on a smaller scale to prepare them for the next step? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have a communal environment and a communal environment is definitely challenging. Um, but our moms do a, um, a communal meal at 530 every day and they trade off depending on how many moms are in the house. They're responsible for making that meal um, for the entire house. So we sit down and share a meal together and practice talking about our days and modeling that. Um, 
they are also completely responsible for um, cleaning the entire building. So they manage the yard care, they manage all of the cooking, cleaning, um, bathrooms, uh, keeping their rooms clean. And um, that's a part of, part of our programming is um, learning those skills and, and really having some structure on these things have to be done. You know, some things have to be done daily, some things have to be done weekly. And so that, that's definitely part of their participation in our program. And in the facility, the kids are there as well with the moms living together and interacting with each other as yep. well, building their social skills as yeah, well. Yeah, and, and moms don't necessarily have to have custody of their kids coming into our program, which is mm -hmm. part of how we build family reunification. So maybe a mom hasn't had the stability in order to, sure. her kids are in foster care and, and she really needs a stable housing unit in order to get those kids back. And maybe, maybe a job, maybe there's some other things that mm -hmm. she needs. She can come into our program and work on the things that she needs to do in order to get her kids out of foster care as well. So um, there's a lot of different dynamics of depending on um, each individual mm -hmm. mom's needs and how many beds we have available. Definitely, that's wonderful. With working with the moms, is it SCIO staff that works with them or is it coordinated with other you know, outside resources or counselors or whatever? How does that work? Yeah, um, it's a coordinated effort. We do a lot of work with our Bridgeway staff um, and myself. I case manage currently the moms in the program, um, but we coordinate with social workers, POs. We coordinate, you know, with Safe Harbor and Salvation Army, just depending on on their needs. But um, it's a coordinated effort. Teachers, um, we're we're working really strongly with one of the. Um, the child's schools right now and, and working on a, a plan to really help um, a child. So just depending on the needs of the families, we coordinate mm -hmm. and want to work together as a community. What's been the success ratio of the moms coming in, you know, from they come in and actually going on to the next level? Mm -hmm. You know, what is the success ratio, excuse me, been? I think, you know, that's a really hard question. Um, we come from a world of really number oriented, mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm not, I'm gonna skip your question. That's fine. But yeah. I'm gonna share with you that every mom who comes to our shelter experiences structure for even a short amount of time. What rules look like, what accountability mm -hmm. looks like. They are, she's forced to, um, to set goals and work towards goals. And, and that's really important. So if, if you're in our program for three months or two years, you, you have, are exposed to those, um, that structure and that accountability. And um, you know, some moms aren't ready for that. Sure. Um, and other moms are extremely successful. And you know, we have tons of success stories of moms who have come into our program, who have gotten a job, who have paid off some mm -hmm. debt, who've um, learned how to budget and gone out, have gotten re like, uh, referrals to counselors and they they really you know we want to work on the scope your whole mm -hmm. um, your whole wellness and and not just you know the budgeting not just right. meal planning not just structure and parenting but we want to help you to really learn how to love yourself learn how to be a good mom um, and what does that mean learn how to create structure so each mom who comes to our program does learn tools in our in order to move on um, Sure. So basically the moms will benefit based on the skills they're, they're learning through your program. Right. So they're learning on their social skills and the kids are learning, you know, to interact with other kids, other children, you know, different ages, yeah. different beliefs, backgrounds, which will help them, help them prepare to, you know, insert back into the community mm -hmm. and participate. And so. give me a year, I'll be able to better give you some numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was basically looking, you know, the, you know, how they benefit and you know the good things that you see. Yes. So, this is where I was kind of going with it. So um, with that, I, I would imagine resources are quite thin, you know, in this day and age. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you have to go through some creative accounting to get the tools and the resources you need to support the program. Yes, definitely. Um, we are supported by um, the United Way, Shimon County United Way. Mm -hmm. um, we are supported by foundations, grants, and individual donors. Um, and our faith communities. We're an association of 32 faith communities um, from all different backgrounds, mm -hmm. and, and they ha support us through membership um, and are part of our, our board structure. And then we have tons of really amazing people mm -hmm. like 
you who do our IT for us um, pro bono and and you know just the uh, blessings that we have from this community sure. and the many people who you know come together to help with our maintenance to um, you know cooking meals sure. um, there's just so many ways that you know we're blessed by this community but definitely money is always something that um, a small nonprofit mm -hmm. a grassroots we're not we have very small state funding through city block grants but we don't have any federal funding um, so we, we really are you know hitting the pavement mm -hmm. and um, and we're supported by you know a lot of small efforts sure with that along you know you mentioned volunteering where i do volunteer for the it work um, can anybody volunteer with any of the programs that SCIO offers or how does that work if somebody would want to volunteer? Yeah, we do have some stipulations depending on what you want to volunteer for. Um, just based on if you're interacting with our moms and, and children, you need to be able to pass a background check mm -hmm. and um, and we would run through sex, sex registry just for the safety of our Absolutely. families. Um, but definitely, it, we would um, you know consider anyone to volunteer, and we're really seeking. Um, we have 32 faith communities. Not every faith community has a delegate, which is what who we consider our ambassadors, sure. and they are communication line between Cheboyne County Interfaith and and their faith community. And so we're seeking delegates from our, our community churches. Um, we definitely welcome any other um, faith communities to to get involved with us. Um, we're seeking out um, board members, specifically a lawyer and um, a color of anyone who's really passionate about fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, we would definitely, you know, take or, or just is really good at relationship building. We're, we're seeking sure. out some people for our board in that way. Um, we also have a meal sharing program where um, you can come in and bring a recipe um, and the food to cook a meal for 20 people, which includes all of the people um, in our program, some staff, and then the group of people you're um, bringing in mm -hmm. and share a meal with the moms and our families. Um, and there's a plenty of other maintenance, like I said. We always have small projects. Um, there, there's lots of ways to get involved. We're, sure. we're always seeking donations. Um, you know, what we're seeking at any, divi any individual time, you know, changes, mm -hmm. but our wish list is on our website, okay. and we always are in need of cleaning supplies, um, toiletry items, feminine hygiene mm -hmm. items, um, dish soap. I can't even tell you how many dish, how much dish soap you go through with, you know, 13 people in the house. So um, those are always um, pantry items. We have a, a really large freezer, so um, you know we can take donations of meats and um, frozen vegetables and frozen fruits, mm -hmm. um, really to increase the nutrition of the moms. Um, those are all really awesome ways to get involved as well. Neat, mm -hmm. neat. Let's jump to the program of supervised visitations. Mm -hmm. Could you give us some background what that's all about? Yeah, that's we contract um, or it came as a contract to us through Health and Human Services and it's really a way for, um, you know, breakups are pretty messy mm -hmm. and and so sometimes it's about two adults who just don't get along together and and their interaction is just unhealthy. And so we can provide a way for, you know, that that um, transportation or that um, supervision of that um, transition from one parent to another. So we, we can do that. Or we can actually be like stay with, with um, the non-custodial parent mm -hmm. for however long. And um, that we do really to help um, to help bring families together. And so um, everyone deserves a second chance. Sure. So whatever happened in the past, we, we wanna be able to give families the ability to have a second cha chance to be reunified, but in the safest way possible. Um, and then we can, the, we, we're in contact with guardian and litems, lawyers, social workers, to make sure that you know if, if we see anything that we're, we're communicating, you know, maybe this person needs counseling, mm -hmm. um, maybe they need some parenting classes, maybe they just don't sure. know how to be a parent. And so we can be um, a third party documenter and then um, communicate to the parties at large on, on how we can better help these families to move forward. I can see safety as well as having the interactions being healthy, you know, in the spirit of the family, you know, where that takes a special 
need or care to do that part of it. And I suppose there, not anybody can just volunteer. You have to have a certain background with that. You know, yeah, as far we, as that's, that goes. that's staff. We, yeah. Those are staff just because we do deal with a lot of confidentiality sure. issues and coordination. Um, so that program we don't really right. take volunteers for. But our farmer's market, we're seeking um, an advisory. We're always seeking people to sit on our advisory board for the Sheboygan market. And we're mm -hmm. working on a task force really for our Plymouth market to grow that um, and in, there's, you know, lots of ways you can get involved with the farmer's market or, you mm -hmm. know, Bridgeway. And, um, and we're, we're welcome to ideas mm -hmm. um, of how else people want to get involved with us. Yeah. With your supervised visits, how many families can you have participating at one time? Yeah, we can serve up to um, 20 families oh, wow. um, in an hour or two hour, hour and a half, two hour time slots. So depending mm -hmm. on, you know, how, how long um, those visits are and our availability at that time. Um, and, and that's completely a free service. That's a partnership through United Way, a city mm -hmm. block grant or a county block grant, sure. sorry. And, um, and then some foundations chip in to help make that possible. Sure. Do you see families being receptive to it, of, of participating in that type of a program? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think that it's a um, most, you know, if, if someone's ready to get their kids back or really are ready to, you know, take that on, um, they, they'll do anything in order to have that sure. opportunity to be with their kids. So if, if the lawyer is saying for safety reasons, you need to have supervision and you really want to see your kids and be a part of their life, you're going to do whatever it mm -hmm. takes. And so um, I think, you know, there's sometimes um, some, there's a lot of history that sure. has to, if, if you are, are attending a supervised visitation, there's a lot of history. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's really hard for, you know, the two parents really to be on the same page with, with why we're there. And, you know, for a lot of reasons, sure. you know, the custodial parent might be, you know, scared for the safety of their kids be because of past issues. Mm -hmm. and, and we respect that. And, um, and we want, you know, we just want to be there so that we, we make sure that mm -hmm. it is safe and that we can communicate with the powers that be as if it's not. Well, that's wonderful. Do you see overlap between the Bridgeway and the supervised visiting? Let's say you have a mom with a few kids in the Bridgeway program and yet the dad is still around and still wants to visit and say, do you see any overlap in those programs? Oh, definitely. If, if we have a mom at, at our program and dad wants to be involved, some, you know, some th people don't need super supervision mm -hmm. and, and that's perfectly fine. But if our moms want to utilize it or we see it the other way, maybe it's a, a non-custodial mom sure. who, um, whose kids are in foster care or kids are with a family member and she wants to, you know, get her kids back. So she starts at the supervised visitation program. And then if there's an opening in Bridgeway and she can get on our waiting list and, um, she can move into Bridgeway in order to have some more structure to get her kids back mm -hmm. um, through that too. So it, it works both ways through the supervised visitation to Bridgeway and then for, you know, our dads, because we work with single moms. So um, it would be a non-custodial mm -hmm. dad utilizing our, our supervised visit if our mom is in our program. Wonderful. Um, lastly, we switched to farmer's market. I know we've already mentioned something about it already, but in volunteering with SCIO this past year or so. I mean, I've lived in Sheboygan County all my life, and this is the first year I went to the farmer's market, so I feel kind of guilty <laughs> that way as far as that goes. But in working with, you know, just with the staff at SCIO and Judy, you know, who heads up the farmer's market, yeah. I mean, it's a kind of a neat thing where it's more than just, you know, vegetables or foods. I mean, there's flowers, there's crafts, there's all kinds of things. So, you know, if you want a really neat experience, it's a place to really go on Wednesday or Saturdays. Oh, you know? it's, it's really a destination. Um, I think, you know, we see a lot of people um, who go and have their, their breakfast there on Saturdays mm -hmm. or meet friends there on, um, after work or at their lunches on Wednesdays. So it's really more about community. Yep. And, and Sheboygan's really in a mentality of we, we want to eat healthier. Um, we want to eat local. We want to support people. We, we want to really build community and and strengthen our community. And you know, supporting local businesses, supporting local farmers, eating healthier, um, sitting down at the table. If you you know buy food from the farmers market, you're probably more likely to to 
um, prepare a nice meal, which has gives you more incentive to sit and eat that meal yes. with your family, mm -hmm. which that's an incredibly important time. There's so much research about you know the importance of food and family, and and food goes across cultures. It goes across mm -hmm. economic statuses. Food is important in every single um, you know from low income to high income. Mm -hmm. Food is food is definitely paramount in in all of our, all of our cultures. Mm -hmm. So of the people participating in the farmer's market, the sellers or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it with the stands, do you see them more little like hobby farms and, you know, people doing this for fun that they bring their produce in or do you see, you know, larger farms or organizations coming there or what's the mix? Um, I don't know those statistics quite as specifically as Judy would, but we, we do have a lot of family farms mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people who are renting actually um, their, their plots um, and that this is this is their livelihood, sure. um, and they go and they not only sell maybe at ours, but also at Appleton or Green Bay, yeah. and um, so this is part of their summer um, and part of their livelihood. Mm -hmm. And you know, tying all three together into you know what we call our family reunification. Mm -hmm. Think about it. When we grew up, five o'clock we ate supper and everybody was at the supper table. Mm -hmm. You know, so there was family communication right there. Yeah. Now. You're off to McDonald's or you put in the TV dinner if you're lucky anymore or something like that and everybody's coming and going or they're right. going on their little gadgets and stuff. Oh, hi. And they're going back at your little gadgets again where, you know, the bridgeway, there you're bringing a sense of family, community mm -hmm. together. You know, the, the sh visitation, similar thing. And even the farmer's market with the comments you made earlier, you know, you buy your vegetables, your fruit, whatever there, you know, and then you prepare it at home, which can kind of then, you know, you want to make the meal and then have it there, which may bring the family back together yeah. as well. So I can see where all, all the programs, you know, actually support the family reunification. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of our coolest things about our farmer's market is we actually accept food share. And so, you know, that's a really cool thing. I don't think many people know. Um, if you go to our um, Judy, who is our farmer's market mm -hmm. coordinator, she has a stand on 8th Street. And we're still, the farmer's market is still there in, through the end of October. And then we have a winter's market that kicks up in October, the first and third Saturday. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and you can actually utilize your food share um, at the farmer's market. Many of our vegetable vendors, they all have a uh, mm -hmm. sign up that says we accept food share. So um, it's another way of, you know, even like low income families sure. to be able to unite around food. Okay. If somebody wanted to get a hold of SCIO, learn more about it, the programs, maybe want to contribute, volunteer, how, what's the best way? Yeah, you can call us at 920-457-7272 um, and ask for Heidi or Jody as our administrative assistant, um, Judy, our farmer's market coordinator, or you can visit our website at www.sheboygancountyinterfaith.org. Um, and we'd be happy to, we do tours okay. um, and people are welcome to come and learn more about the Bridgeway program. Um, and, and we would be happy to do a tour. Um, and you can leave a comment or email mm -hmm. me at scio.heidi at gmail.com. Okay. Do you also have a Facebook page? We have a Facebook page. Okay. Yep, you can connect to us on Facebook, like us, and share. Um, we, have, we post a lot of pictures about, about Facebook and, or about the farmer's market, mm -hmm. and we would love it if you um, hashtag SCIO farmer's market, um, if you are posting pictures about the farmer's market, mm -hmm. so we can you know, build community and share you know, how we're supporting our local um, vendors. Okay. I feel kind of guilty, you know, you see hashtag and I'm still trying to figure that out. And I work in IT, you know, they come up with <laughs> hashtag this and all these other things. So, um, Heidi, I'd like to thank you for being on our show and talking about family reunification. It sounds like there's a lot of neat things going on at SCIO. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Definitely. Um, if you have any questions about this episode, you can contact us on our webpage at wscssheboygan.com. Um, for your host for Quality of Life, I'm Dave Augustine, and on behalf of Heidi and SCIO, thank you for watching.